enjoyed it. No, we're well, having fun. Good, right? good. Yeah. Come on then. Right, are we on? Right, yes. Are we on? Let's go. Are we on? Yeah, excellent. Sarah, tell Hello. me. Tell what we're doing. So we met at Car Fest, didn't we? We did, for we the did. first time. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to sit of... down because my little yeah, poorly no, feet no, are. Yeah, you must. Yeah, I'm sit right. down. Yeah. Have a glass of wine, do you? Have a glass of wine. Well, I'm a little bit. I'm kind of sniffing out a beer somewhere. I thought that yeah, wine yeah, guy left some beers. There's some cider that we've got brought. Do I have a wine? A beer. I'd love a beer. Is it too early or too late for no, a beer? No, it's Never too early. Early. It's exactly the right time. Find a somewhere and yeah. love a beer. Actually. Well, talking of which, it might be 2 a.m. for us, but yeah. our friends stateside, it's about 6 o'clock in the evening on a Friday night, so they'll be tuning in. Perfect. Now. So they'll be in, the, in tears, still, Finishing you know. Work, having a bit. Over Trump. Yeah. yeah. And in Canada, my friend Julie's watching in Kalama in Canada. Hi. Brill. Yeah, so that would be great. And it's like lunch or oh, morning. In the Middle East, tomorrow right. stomping grounds in Cairo early morning. Oh really? In Australia, all my mates in Australia. It's You're well travelled then. I am a bit, yeah. Yeah. I've been around a bit. Does that sound wrong? Right. Middle 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 <laughs> I'm not drinking that. <laughs> stout. I can't drink stout. What a thing to do. What are these? What are these? What are these? What have we got? Oh. Cumbrian challenge. Did you want to be challenged or did you just want a nice beer? Oh, I did, yeah. I wanted one of those beers that we had earlier. What's that one? Can I show you? Oh, no, 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 no. What's that? I'm going to have a beer. Right. You have a beer. Cider. You deserve one. Why not? I'll have a cider. Yes, absolutely. Right. So, so I'm going to cook. Yeah, so you're doing two dishes, aren't you? Two dishes. So we've got four, 50 minutes. Yeah, and we're going to get two dishes done. Totally. Lovely. We're going to start with um, chicken biryani. Mm. Now, I call this my cheap chicken biryani. Right. Because an actual biryani, which is, if anyone knows it, is a proper celebration dish. This is the thing you would have at weddings, or, you know, births and marriages. You know, these are all the things that, you know, this is a proper celebration meal. Is that good? Did you enjoy that? Yeah. Good thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers. The magic We're of TV. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to Great us. to have you. Mm. Mm. Nice couple of dishes. So, but what I've basically done is taken the whole thing, because I say the whole thing can take a day. Okay. Well, up. I've got a day. <laughs> <laughs> but not just with me, to be fair. No, not You've just got, with you. Uh, yeah, 23 other guests to, to speak to. Yeah. So, yeah, some um, of them don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They sort of take the elements of what is in a biryani. Yeah. What do you need? You need yeah, yeah. lovely fragrant aromatic spices, you need succulent meat, you need perfectly fluffy basmati rice, crispy crunchy onions, and some fruit and nuts, all you know, buttery and golden. Sounds good. To go in there. So I've basically taken all those elements, taken them apart, done them separately, put them all together. So right. anyone can do this, and I promise you it can be done really, really quickly. So well, I'm starting in, in comparison with, to a whole day, I'm sure. Well, yes, yeah. exactly. And it's really, really simple. Okay. So we're starting with um, chicken supremes, yep. um, which are just chicken breasts with the, with the wing bones. Skin on? Hatch. I think oh. skin on, yeah, because we're going to roast these now. Right. We're going to get some flavour really in them, we're going to roast them. Nice. So um, what I need, actually, is that microplane. I should have asked for that. Do you know any is idea where that is? Is it back here? It keeps kind of magically bouncing back there. Oh, that's good, doesn't it? Let's see. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just putting a few yeah, slashes in these chicken breasts and that's obviously going to make sure that the flavour of the marinades that we're going to use is going to go right into them. Um, and I am keeping the skin on because I want them to, to remain nice and, uh, and moist and juicy. So the first thing I'm going to need is... Want to go back to just that? Yeah, just go there. And that's what's seen. That is always what you're seen. Right, right. Right, I've got this pan on, thank you very much. I've got this pan on, uh, on quite a low heat. Okay. In the meantime, some ginger is what I need. Ginger, uh, ground ginger? No, um, fresh ginger in there. If you could grate them, you can sit there, you know oh. Great, a bit. This is great, this. There. Just sit there and cook, that's fine. Um, coriander. Uh, how much? Yeah, a bit more. Keep bit going. More. Um, about a teaspoon and a half. Now, I have to say, normally I, I would do this with, with ground, but right, obviously okay. using the whole spices is better. I was sort of put to shame earlier when Harry was on, she always does her own spices, and I have to say, 
I She's gone. So Matt knows it. <laughs> no, but Been I often there, do. Been there, done that, gone. Moved on. Because I just think, you know, in some, no, you know, some ways you're busy and you just want to get the food, you know, you, it's, it's nice to do it. And actually, if you're going to do it in any dish, that's perfect, thank you. You should do it with this one um, because, you know, the, the fresh flavours do really kind of sing it out. I, I, think, I think there's a time and a place, isn't there? Yeah. It's like I would say, you know, if we're teaching how to make fresh pasta here, yeah. It's like, don't get me wrong, I don't make fresh pasta every single day. No. I use dried exactly right. more than I use fresh. Exactly. But when I have the time and the inclination, yeah. I will make fresh and yeah. will enjoy it. But it's probably at the weekend, yeah. on a Sunday when we're not working, and we're, exactly. we're kind and of then, in then the house. it's more of an occasion. Yeah, it, really? and it's raining, and there's, you know, I want to do something. Yeah. I quite, quite agree. There's a so if we try and do a few bits things. on here, yeah, then hopefully our um, guest editor will be able to follow no, it. We have a guest editor. We do, we have a guest editor. So, these are things going straight onto the chicken, um, on the chicken breast. Right, mm -hmm. can you see that I've got my hands in the pan here? Yeah. If the pan is too hot for you to put your hands in, it's too hot, basically. And I don't mean like silly chef hands yeah, like Peter's yeah, yeah, yeah. got. I mean normal people's hands. Yeah. So you just want to warm them. You don't want to, like, go bananas, mm. basically. And then once you've done that, we need to bash them up a bit. So I'm going to... Can you grab that? Pestle and mortar. Pestle and mortar, which is right behind that. Oh, marvellous. Oh, do you know what? It's an awful lot heavier than it was at four o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> that, yeah. So, go on, fire them in. They can just go. I'll there. do my thing. Lovely. So you people might recognise you from MasterChef. Yep. That yeah. That was that was where it all started. So how far did you get? I was a finalist. Were you? Was, uh, which was wow. Well, well done. Week. I know. It's Were you quite... gutted you didn't win? Or not? But you know, I, I was. Um, I was. Uh, well, I was. I was gutted to to not. You know, yeah. get right to the end. Yes, I was. Yeah. But to be fair, I think the girl who won was always going to win. Right. And it was Natalie Coleman who won in my year, and she was absolutely brilliant. And she didn't, she honestly didn't really put a foot wrong right. the whole way through. Did so you get think, to you right know. to the point where you cook for all the Michelin star chefs around the table and stuff? I cooked for Marcus Ware and your friend Marcus Ware yeah, that we were yeah, talking yeah. about earlier. But no, I didn't do that. In fact, they didn't do that. The, oh, um, is that the professionals that do that? Or? It just depends. Things they change it every year, don't they? Yeah. What I when the, when I crashed and burned, and I have to say, I didn't really do a lot wrong until the day I went. But home. you did a big and one. And I did a big. Well, if you're gonna go out in a band, and that was you know. for all the critics, and it was a room of like twenty critics, and we had to do a, a service to what order. What makes a critic though? Well, I didn't do well. I've met a few in my time, and mm. that could all go in here. Okay. Thank you. Shall I just pick it up? And... Well, I can't be asked. No, but I could. Okay. okay. There we, go. there we go. So, what we've got in there, so one of the things I really wanted to show, I think, with this dish is that just because it's Indian cooking doesn't yep. mean you have to throw everything at it. It doesn't mean every spice that you've got in yeah, the cupboard yeah, has yeah, to go yeah. in there. There's really the skill three. is blending, isn't it? Well, it is, and there's three flavourings in this. There is a coriander, the garam mm. masala, and the ginger. That's, okay. that's all, really. Yeah. We're going to put some yoghurt in there, mm. and I'm going to use my hands because that's wow. the way that we okay. do it. And just rub it all in. And the yogurt starts to really, way. thank you, starts to really tenderise and um, gets all that flavour in. Um, you can see I'm using my hands to sort of get it right into the, the slashes in the meat. Um, yeah, and you'll notice there's no garlic in here, there's no chilli. This is all very, um, you know, very mild and aromatic spices and that's exactly what we're after. Sometimes they call this, it's a bit like a, a korma as well, they might call it a, a white curry because you know, you're, you're looking for very um, subtle colours, subtle flavours and, and all of that will go in there. So basically once that's done, I'm going to go wash my hands and then that's going to get popped into the oven. But now I've got the chicken hands. So once that's done, you can see how that looks now, just nicely marinated, looks very juicy. Is that going to go into the oven? Oh, did I break the oven? I think I may have slightly broken the oven. Alright. Uh, oh, you see it's off. Oh, 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 yeah. Can I tell you about the time I set fire to a stage? Oh no! Before you asked me him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't. Right, so that is in the oven. The okay. next thing we're going All right, to do. Back. We're good. Next thing we're going to do is um, sort out our rice. Now, 
before I, can I get you to go off and wash that rice? Yes. In plenty of water. Okay, cold. And drain it in the sink. Um, coldy warm would be fine. Coldy warm. Yeah, coldy warm. Um, yeah, not, not hot and not cold. But um, washing rice is really important. You know, people do ask about getting fluffy, how to get fluffy rice. Um, and I would always wash it because that gets rid of some of the starch and then what that means is that the grains can separate and you don't get that sort of starchy, mushy slice of rice. You know, you know I know when I get it wrong because that's what my children say to me. They say, oh, we're having a slice of rice today, Mum. Um, but I don't usually get it wrong because I have a rice cooker. And then that's all we need. To, all we need to have perfect rice every time and not worry about anything. So if you haven't got a rice cooker already, I would get one. That's what I would say. But actually, of course, because we're doing this biryani, we're going to do it in the pan. Um, which you have to do because we're going to combine everything. So that's fine. So I'm chopping some shallots. Um, you can use normal brown onions, that's also fine. Um, but the shallots are a little bit sweeter and they tend to crisp up and go quite brown. So that's why I'm using shallots. And this is going to form the basis of our sort of crispy onions that are going to go with the rice, which is another you know, important part of the dish. Now, one of the things you can do if you really want to cheat, thank you very much, if you really want to cheat with this is you can buy those pre-fried crispy onions right. and you get them in a little pot and they tend to be eaten in the salad dressing yeah. bits yeah. of the supermarket. So they are quite a good thing to do. They're very just nice sprinkled on the top um, right. or stirred through the rice at the end. Um, I use them quite a bit because they give you a lot of texture I feel like I should and sweetness. Have a what do you think? I feel like I should. I don't so know in why. Case, in case your mum's watching. Um, I would put it. I'll drink it more in a bottle to wind her up. <laughs> I'm, 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 that, I'm that son. <laughs> You're I'm that, that one. one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Oh. Um, feeling yeah, civilised. Well, that's good. Yeah. So we've got this nice. Um, Leighton so, sent me that. It's a good one, that, isn't it? Yes, well, thank yeah. you, Leighton. It is lovely. It fits with my kitchen. Yeah, the lovely colour. Do you yes. like my kitchen? I do, it's beautiful. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice to be here. Yeah. I've seen it. Do you like my funky oh, light? Yeah. Those are very nice. I bought that off eBay. Did you? eBay. I was going to ask you where that's from. It's yeah. cool, isn't it? It's incredible. eBay it's and really the nice. light bulbs are from Wilco's. No, really? really? Yeah. They're kind of vintage light bulbs. They're really but nice. Yeah, it's it, when, when we first kind of built the kitchen, it was all a bit, little bit cold, but then the minute I put that in and switched it on, it was kind of warm. I particularly approve, as a lady that said to me, this lovely soft light is very fashionable. Good, it's good. It's really rather nice. <coughs> mm. See what so, I can do. Pan on. I'm, I'm good. It's quite nice, I think, for this dish to use a nice pan because uh, it's nice to serve it in the pan. Take it into the table, take the lid off. Sure. All the aromas come out, and it's all rather Sounds lovely. Grand. So, you know, kind of plan ahead and think of, because once it's in, you can't really take it out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, plan ahead and put it in a nice pan mm. if you have one. Um, otherwise, don't worry about it. So, I'm going to put some butter into that pan. Wow. Now, normally, I would be using ghee if I was at home. Okay. I'd be using ghee. So, use ghee. Um, for this, right. uh, for pilau rice, for biryani, for those sorts of so things. So, is clarified butter the best replacement for ghee? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, although I, I have, um, you know, I'm rather fond, I mean, we've been using uh, Rake's Cold Press Rake's Dawn most yeah, of the day. Yeah. I'm quite a fan of this. And yeah. it does work, and I've done it. Quite so similar, I've done, isn't it? I I've, done vegan, I've done vegan pilaus mm. with, with this, and it works. It makes a nice colour, so you can do it, definitely. Yeah. But traditionally, you'd use ghee. The only difference between Indian ghee mm. and uh, European clarified butter, yeah. they're both um, heated butter mm -hmm. until the, the milk solids yeah, fall yeah. away and you've got pure butter fat left. That's the same. Yeah. But the Indians, um, you know, as we like to put a bit, bit more on everything, they heat it to a higher temperature for longer. Right. So you get you get a nuttier flavour. So you get right. more yeah, of a flavour yeah. to it. But it's the same. It's the same concept. So. Okay. Um, and as I like to kind of, I don't like my recipes to be the sort of recipe that you see a whole load of ingredients on it and you think, oh, well, I don't know where to get that. You know? yeah. So I'm not going to do it. So it's the first barrier, isn't it? It's the first really hurdle is. on a recipe. So if you've got the great, if you can find it, fabulous. If not, just stick some butter. Okay. Absolutely fine. I'm going to put a little bit of um, oil in as well. So, so Because um, I don't want that butter to get too to burn, because of course it's the milk solids in the butter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which in ghee wouldn't be a problem. Right. So back to Master Chef, because yes. that's kind of, you know, the thing that we all know you for. Yeah. What what was the what was the process like of so you applied? Yeah. What made you apply? Well, okay, I my daughter applied. 
for you. Actually, my daughter applied for me. She oh, did the application yeah. for winter. I knew she'd well, done it. Yeah. It wasn't a complete and surprise. And did you think at any point you were going to end up on it? Absolutely not. No. Uh, at no point. Until you were just I like, yeah, whatever. Through. And a fun, it's funny you should ask, because a funny thing happened on the way here. Right. That sounds like a bad joke, doesn't it? Sounds like I'm going at Bernard Manning, but I'm not. Um, a funny thing happened on the way here. As I came up on the train through the lovely, beautiful countryside, I stopped at Warrington Bank here, yeah. as one does. Yeah, I stopped there a few times, um, yeah. And as I did, the way I, I pulled up in the carriage, it was directly opposite the exact spot on Warrington Station that I took the call from MasterChef and I had my first phone interview with them. Right. Literally right there. So it started with a phone it, interview. Phone interview. And did you know that you'd got to a phone interview phone stage? Interview. No, I knew nothing. So, so they just randomly called you and if you answered, you answered. Got, so it's a long online form. Yeah. Fill it in. I would encourage everyone to do it. It's great. Brilliant. Oh. She's loved it. Um, send off the form, yeah. hear nothing, for months. I heard nothing yeah. for months. And then suddenly, out of the blue, on Warrington Station, yeah. I got a call saying, oh, hello, my name's so-and-so, I'm in the search of the BBC's MasterChef. Yeah. And, um, you know, would you, you know, we'd like to ask you a few questions about your application. And I thought, like, okay. Um, and so, yeah, I had to chat with them, and they just sort of asked you a bit about yourself, yeah. what you do, and who are your influences, and right. did you start cooking, and blah, blah, what do you like to cook? All that sort of thing. Right. And then they kind of, yeah, at the end of it, it was like, don't call us, we'll call you. Yeah. Um, heard nothing for a few more weeks. Then had another phone call. Right. And then they were a bit more detail about you. Have you ever cooked bread? Did you ever make your own pasta? Have you do you do this? Do you do right. that? Yeah, what would you put for a dinner party? Yeah. Blah, 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 that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Um, and again, don't call us, we'll call you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, heard nothing for a while again. Um, and then I got another phone call saying, we'd like you to come and see us. Right. Um, Come for a casting day at some anonymous kind of office block in London. Yeah. Um, and bring some food that you've cooked at home. You know, it'll be cold, you won't be able to eat it or anything, but you must cook what you want and, and we'll taste it as if it was we'll judge it as if it was hot, if you know. And and did you know at this point it was all moving it was all towards MasterChef? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That was never it was not, not a secret in no. any way. Okay. But then you know you walk in and they can stick a camera right up your nose straight away yeah. just, just to check that you could speak. Yeah, and to do yeah. things at the same time yeah. without chopping your hands off. And there was a, was there anybody there on the day you were there that made it as well? Not that I saw. Not that you noticed. Not that I noticed, but it was a real uh, conveyor belt. There were clearly was hundreds of it. Churning them. And through. it was like ten minutes in, ten minutes out. Yeah. It was a bit like going to the GP or going to the, yeah, yeah. the dentist or something. So yeah, no, it was really. Um, Fascinating. Yeah, it was great. And yeah. then again, after that, you know, and they'll see lots of questions about the food. Because like, I, obviously, I was a I was a judge on a program, yeah. so I didn't get to see all that part of yeah. it. Yeah, and there's a whole. Um, so John and Greg. And I did my bit. Yeah, no, no, of course. These yeah. are all just researchers and people that work for the yeah, production yeah. company. And yeah. 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 Well, we, when we judged, we didn't turn up until everyone was cast, everything was yeah. in place. Yeah, exactly. We knew where we were going Absolutely. and the, the whole lot. I mean, we went through the whole casting process of becoming judges. Yes, yourselves. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, it, uh, we never found out what, what it was like on you your know, side of yeah. things. Yeah. As you know, it's great because I now go back as a judge. Yeah. So I've been back, yeah, right. I was back last year, I'm back again this series, and it's a whole different. Ball game. Is it quite cool. nice and you oh, just all chill? Oh, there and drink wine and cook food that other people have cooked. But this time, for whatever reason, I'm still very hush hush and secretive, I had to walk through the kitchen, you know, the competition kitchen, yeah. to get to my little place right. where I was having my interview. Yeah. And um, literally, as I got through it, I felt like all the breath had just really? knocked out of me. All the emotions all the back. Comes flooding back. Mm. But, you know, I had a good time. Good. Right. It's good we've been chatting, so we needed to let our onions. Good. Right. Well, you know, that's so what that's I thought. So that's good. I'm kind of looking at the time. All right, we've got, yeah. we've got 35 yeah, we'll minutes. Manage. We'll manage. The onion should be cooked, you know, fairly slow, probably quicker and slower than we're doing it today. Okay. Um, you know, on a medium to high heat. You want them to be soft, but you also want them to be really golden brown and crispy. Right. And then we're going to start adding our whole right. spices. Wonderfully our washed onions. bay leaves. Wonderfully washed by the Lake District Rain. By the Cumbrian Rain, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So fresh bay leaves, dried bay leaves are also yeah. fine. Can you find me some cinnamon sticks and some cardamoms, please? Cardamom, cinnamon. And those go straight into the oil. So what you're doing is sort of creating flavour in the oil, like a spiced oil. Um, maybe four or five cardamom pods and a whole cinnamon stick. So right. I, at home I would use cassia bark. Yes, I um, know. I tried that with Harry. Yeah, really which is nice. like a milder sort of form of it's it. Kind of sweeter. Yeah, more anisey. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but not as kind of. I was fine. I do like cinnamon, but it's, yeah, exactly. 
Um, mm. And it also just cinnamon sort of reminds me of apple pie a lot. I mean, and this mm. kind of cassia is a bit less, a bit more savoury. It's quite different cassia bar, yeah. isn't it, actually? But if you're going to use cinnamon, just use the whole stick. Yeah. You don't, um, so it's all about it just infusing exactly. a plate. Yeah. Don't, actually, they're looking perfect now. They're looking really, really good. Um, good. The rice, which has been washed and dried, so don't try and keep your rice too wet. Because if you have wet rice, it, it will break. Um, it's right, we didn't have it. What I mean is, don't wash it and leave it hanging around right, for yeah, ages because yeah, yeah. then it will get mushy and okay. it, will, it will break. Okay, well, that's good. And you don't want that. Um, and then the next thing you need is more ginger. So, basically, all more the spices. Fresh ginger? All of the spices that we put in um, before. Did we get rid of the mac thing? Did we? No. I know we so, all of the spices we put in before, we're going to replicate that and put it in okay. again, basically. All right. Um, well, pretend I've put coriander in, so I can't be bothered to grind it anymore. All right. But um, let's pretend I've done that. And then and we'll put in a bit more ginger. So do you, what sort of food do you cook at home? <laughs> Never at home. No, you're not. You're busy. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's to my real shame that people ask my children, people say to my children, oh, you're so lucky, you know, to have a mum that cooks so much and cooks so well and blah. And, and my son says, yeah, oh, she's in. I'll get beans on toast, you know. Right. Uh, so, uh, you yeah. were... No, that's not true. I cook, I, we cook all sorts of food. Yeah. yeah. And my husband's a really good cook. So, okay. So, that's, um, that's good. So, <laughs> so you used to work in the police force? Yeah, I was in law enforcement, yeah. And you finished now? Yeah, yeah. Completely. You just kind of yeah. following your... I spent 20 years in, in law enforcement, criminal intelligence, right. organised crime. Wow. Well, combating organised crime. I was so, in organised crime. Right. That and so were you, actually, were you a police officer? No, I, I was an immigration officer right. and I was an intelligence officer. Okay. What's an intelligence Which, officer do? It doesn't mean I'm very intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> For a start. <laughs> it means that you look at... Um, um, you analyse stuff you, and... Yeah, you, you look at... So you sat in an armchair, the safe that. police officer. Yeah, with a white pussy cap. And I used <laughs> yeah. to stand there. Got and to know, yeah. Them. Right, just to recap. Yeah. Few spices, same spices but on the chicken, ginger, onions. Um, the the uh, rice and the grains have been fried in the butter, the spiced butter. We're now okay. going to put in chicken stock. So that is, again, sort of, you know our cheat, if you like, okay. in that, you know, we're not cooking the chicken in the rice for a long time as we would do no. the traditional biryani, yeah. uh, but we're cheating by getting some chicken stock and, okay. and sticking it in there. And it's always sort of, um, I do um, half the amount of rice to liquid, so right. there's 350 grams of rice I in there, I never get rice and 700 right mils of liquid. So if you do it like that, it's really quite, mm. it's quite straightforward. Um, it would have been even better if that stock had been boiling, and then it would have been yeah. absolutely perfect. Um, but as it is, you just need to bring it up, as soon as it starts um, bubbling away, mm -hmm. you put the lid on and you turn it right down. Right. So that the lowest it will go, basically. Okay. Um, and if you've got, in fact, I was with a, a client the other day, I do cookery lessons and, and I also do master classes with yeah. people one to one. And I was with a lady who had naga, which is lovely, although my heart always sinks when I have yeah. to do a dinner party. But um, yeah, but she um, put her rice in, in the bottom of the naga. Yeah. Which actually worked quite well. Okay. And I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. So if you know if you've got a, a hob lid on a lid quite off. fierce lid on. Mm. Um, yeah, because it's got to absorb. So we're using the absorption method. Mm. So you can't have the lid off. And if you haven't got a lid, another tip, if you haven't got a lid that fits very well, then put foil on top mm. and, and put it on top. Because it needs to be sealed. Yeah. That is the whole point that, that all the, the spices and the flavour and the steam in, that's in yeah. there is going to stay in there. In a lot of commercial kitchens we clean film the lids. Yeah. Because you're kind of not, you're a bit further away from the heat and it just traps everything in. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. So none of that flavour is going to get out. Yeah. So that's what you Okay. Want. So that's it, pretty much. Real. Um, that can just sit there and as soon as that rice is cooked, mm -hmm. it's done. So the chicken will roast for about 20, 25 minutes and as soon as that's yeah. done, we'll keep an eye on it, but as soon as yeah. it's done, we'll chop it up into a few bits. I'll open that so you, you don't break the oven. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near that oven. Hey, as long as you don't set the place on fire, then it's a bonus, yeah. isn't it? But to be fair, that was a barbecue. Well, I'm not sure that's was really it? fair at all, but anyway. No. Um, I'm just going to put that on a medium heat, and then I'm just going to finish off the very last thing, which is, so the other thing that you have in biryani is um, the fruit, and, fruit and nuts. And so he's breaking everything now as well. Um, fruit and nuts. So although I can get a little bit sniffy about fruit and curries, right? It's a, it was always what I, you know, sniffily call an English curry. Oh really? Yes. Why is that then? 
Well, because you know, in in the seventies, you know, I remember, you know, being in the seventies and the eighties that you know someone would say, "Oh, we're having a curry." I said, my husband, for example, who didn't really have, I think he had his first Indian meal when he left. Home, went to university, right. and um, but he remembers you know the Vesta boil in the bag curries, and that was all you could have. Coronation sort of, chicken was about as yeah. curry as I well, am. Well, exactly, and they, they always had sultanas in, so I just had yeah. a little thing about you know curries with sultanas in. But in this, you need yeah. some fruit. So I'm using corn, Peter. I know. Stay I know. with us. You can do it. All right. Yeah. Good. Push through. Um, you're not even halfway through. I know it's coming next, I'll be alright. <laughs> yeah, she'll sort you out. Um, so I'm using cashew nuts and um, cashew nuts? Mm. Um, cashew nuts and uh, sultana, so mouthful. But you can use what you've got lying around. Oh, so. Almonds, dates, mm. apricots. I do a Christmas one with, with turkey and cranberries and um, almonds, so that's a kind of a nice one. So it's really up to you, what do you like? And all you really have to do is um, stir the, warm them through and what you'll and what will happen is the sultana sort of plump up and they okay. absorb the, the butter yeah. and they plump up and as soon as they're shiny and plump and the cashews have got a little bit of um, um it's probably best to use unsalted cashews yeah um you know just because otherwise salt, it can you? yeah exactly um and then that oh i didn't put the salt on the rice did i no salt's just there there's a pot or a mill just it on it quickly it doesn't really very long. Sounds good though. It does. It does. So what we got enough power? No, I don't think I have. Here you go, crank it up. Do you want it full power? No, I want it quite I want it simmering really. Get it up to boil and then knock it down a bit. So when did you acquire your cooking skills then that took you to Master Chef? When why or when? Where did you acquire your skills? Uh well, I mean, I used to love cooking with my mum, and yeah. a lot of these recipes sort of come from, yeah. from yeah. my mum originally. Some of the recipes I do still are exactly the same, I haven't yeah. changed them at all. Mm. Um, and some have been adapted, you know, some have been sort of made slightly more modern, yeah. maybe. Um, my mum was always really good at using British ingredients and local and seasonal ingredients. So, yeah. so my heritage, uh, my family is in Bangladesh. Yeah. So my heritage is from, from there. So the spices, the cooking techniques are all very Bengali or Bangladeshi. I, I use the terms interchangeably. Um, but as I say, mum always used, you know, she would use rhubarb from the garden, or she would use, you know, whatever she found, you know, leeks and, and that sort of thing. And, and my style is, you know, is definitely, I hesitate to use the word fusion because I think it gets overused a little bit. But, um, you know, I'm a... I describe myself as a, a Bengali Welsh Essex girl, mm. so I've got all those kind of influences going on. Yeah, Welsh, and, um, exactly. yeah I was born in Wales. Oh, were you? Yeah, born so I, um, yeah, so I have all of that, you know, the different things, and yeah. I think it's important to use, yeah. like most of the chefs you'll, you'll speak to, yeah. local and seasonal ingredients, because those things taste better yeah. at the time. So that's what and I do. Did you ever see John Thoreau smile at all? Yes, he smiled a lot he smiled at, a lot at lot me. Really? Yes. <laughs> no, we got on really well. We did. Hard He's lovely. Right. He is quite serious. Yeah, hard man to please. Um, yeah, he, we got on really well. Both of them are, are very, very lovely guys and, and were very kind to me and I, I did have a nice time yeah. with them. John's really supportive and helpful. He wants you to do well. And uh, the only time he gets grumpy is if he thinks you aren't trying or if you're not just not doing your best. Um, so that's, well, I can understand that, you know. I'm probably like that with my children as well, so. I can be a bit fierce as well. Cooks as well. Sorry. Are your kids good cooks? Um, are my kids good cooks? Yes, I would say. Well, they, they have potential. My daughter is a very good baker. She could, she's got the makings of a good pastry chef. And my son, you know, likes to come and help peel garlic. But that's quite that's quite nice. Too. You're into baking as well. Yeah. Not especially. No. no. I don't really have the patience for it to be honest. Um, so these are done. As you can see, the the sultan sort of doubled in size as they've kind of. Um, swelled up and absorbed all that nice butter so they can just be put to one side yeah the rice is down the chicken's down we'll put it all together and then we'll eat it and that'll be nice so i'll pop that over there that's not in the way and then we're going to get on with our lamb chops so i need more ginger so i have got here some really quite beautiful lamb chops actually um 
lamb chops are very well, nice. Peter said, one. "Well, yeah, here fallen. you are Listen. again." I am not. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> you know, he's, got, he's got in the back room where the cookery yeah. school is. He's got yeah. himself asleep. You know, twenty-four hours. He couldn't manage he twelve just hours. Could he just hack it though. He's already gone to for a sleep. He's gone for a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So, lamb chops. I'm using. Uh, well, these are just like normal. What would you call these? Uh, loin chops. Yeah. Um, they're a bit fatter than I would normally use. Um, you can get the thin cut loin yeah. chops, which make this a really, yeah. really good dish. Do you um, see the fat on these? I will, yeah. yeah. I have actually taken some of the fat off. These are like proper yeah. farmer's yeah. chops yeah. and yeah. a great big yeah. bit of fat on, which is fine, but we haven't got that long to cook yeah. them. Yeah. Um, they also work really well if you want to make them pretty. You can yeah. do the sort of cutlets, which are the, yeah. the rack, the little lamb lollipops almost. Yeah. So they're very nice too. But these are brilliant. I'm going to cook them obviously here inside. Very, very good to do on the barbecue. They're fantastic. You can marinate them up the night before. And what was, um, what was your favourite dish to cook on these MasterChef? Do you know, I did this dish actually. Um, I did this dish, a, a very similar one anyway. And it was the first time I got to cook my own food. Right. And I did this and, and other, because it's kind of inspired yeah. by a roast dinner this. You'll see how um, how we go with, with the other bits in, in the dish. Um, and apart from being told off for my portion size, which is a bit large, as you can see from the size of the chops. Um, yeah, I was, I was told off for, uh, is this the star or the main one? Because we can't tell. But other than that, yeah, they liked all the flavour. So it was, a, it was a good dish for me, actually. There were lots of things I did that I, I really enjoyed. And I cooked at the Savoy. For I would say girls. Like I cooked uh, with Atul Kocha, yeah. who's been yeah. uh, twice Michelin uh, starred in Indian Chef and a huge yeah. hero of mine. Yeah. I had a whole day with him, a masterclass in his restaurant. So um, who is your favourite chef? That's such a hard question. I think I find it hard to go past Keith Floyd. I absolutely adored Keith Floyd, and that's not just because he always had a drink in his hand. Yeah. Although some would argue I often had a drink in his hand when I'm cooking. But, um, just because he had that, that joy, he had that joy of the food, and I'm, I'm absolutely for that. I don't, I don't think that one should be too serious about these things. At the end of the day, we all have to eat, don't we? Um, and if you can make something nice, but if you can put some love and energy and fun into it, then I think you can do it. Yeah, definitely. No. Unless you're baking, of course, in which case it's a science. Well, so they say. Yeah, um, although again, I'm a bit like you know, I'll just yeah. and see what happens. Yeah. So I think you can you can muck around with that as well. Um, but well, certainly in terms of um, flavours, you know, there's no. And we see that nowadays, don't we? Like, you know, in the bakers, for example, where people are, are now it's not just normal Victorian stuff is it anymore, is it? People are doing all sorts of wonderful combinations and flavours, which is great. So. Um, Right, garlic, ginger, I'm just grating these, you could, if you wanted to use kind of a lazy garlic and ginger you can, but fresh is always better, so if you just have the time, just do this. Talking of the, um, the bake-off, for the, um, the radio show I do is a little, um, little test, a little experiment. Yes. We went to deep fry various random items. <laughs> Listeners suggested items of bake that should be deep fried. Okay. And the, um, the most popular item, believe it or not, which we, we deep fried in batter, was um, uh, a bacon and egg roll. Ooh. Deep fried in batter. And was that nice? And we took it into a pub, we tested it, along with things like deep fried Ferrara Rocher, Jaffa Cakes, oh, this God. kind of thing. Was it all sweet stuff? Yeah, mostly, <laughs> apart from the, um, the, bacon, <laughs> yeah, the bacon and egg roll, deep fried in batter. That's what you need. I'll pass the one on to uh, Chef Sidwell when he wakes up from his sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just realised I've got to put my cloves in the rice. Yeah. Put cloves in the rice. Um, what we need to do is bash up some of these in that mortar port and vessel. That's not what it's called. Oh, in there. Mortar and vessel. No, where is it? Is it? Oh, don't is worry. It, it's hiding oh. behind the okay. Yeah. So just talk you through what I'm putting in. Yeah. A little bit of turmeric, never too much. I don't go crazy with turmeric. Yeah, so you want me to put some of these in there? Yes. Okay. Just put about a teaspoon of each. So that's what's going in there is Cuban seeds, coriander seeds. Oh, Cumin seeds and coriander seeds. Oh, this is one that Oh, it's got a water on it. Oh, okay. yeah. oh that's why. That I found some that are open. There you go. Teaspoon of cumin seeds. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I've just, sorry, I found yeah. some that was open. Oh, 
about the same teaspoon of cayenne seeds. Yeah. If there's and that's to go on there, is it? Yeah, grind it up, shove it on there, that'd be perfect. So it's good that, we, it's good that you're here, isn't it? I know it, it is. Yeah, I'm done. not just here to be here. Done, yeah. No, exactly not. Good, um... You know I'm much in full now, I don't think I can manage anymore. But that's the thing, you've got to pace yourself, haven't you? Yeah. You've just got to try everything. Do you think you went too hard too I think hard I did, I first. think I did, yeah. What was your first thing? Yeah. <laughs> Before his cheese toasting. Yeah, that was pretty spectacular, wasn't it? Oh, bit of a squish of oil. <coughs> now these seeds are pretty difficult to grow. Fantastic aroma, yeah. 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 And we didn't even taste them. We had the same kind of fun. You could have tasted them all as well. Yeah. Right. Do you want to chuck those on there? Yeah. That would be perfect. So we've got about two teaspoons now freshly ground. The health benefits of turmeric, it contains um, cumin, isn't it? That's right, exactly. Um, and I was, uh, yeah, I was, I was reading about that, the health benefits of that. Yeah, they benefit. really are. Anti-depression, anti-cancer, anti anti-inflammatory. Yeah, anti-dementia. Yeah. Um, so good for you. But um, if you take it, um, pound of food, I mean, I went through a phase of uh, buying it off the supermarket shelf and mixing it in water and down again. Yeah. But you've got to mix it with black pepper, apparently, oh, really? to increase the... Um, uh, 80, apparently 85 percent of the cumin passes through the body if you, if you just have it on its own. Right. But if you if you grind black pepper in the turmeric, mix it with a bit of it, it increases the absorption um, wow. by a thousand percent apparently. But it's a superfood, isn't it? Like you say, turmeric. It is. Yeah. And I mean, the thing that makes me laugh is that um, you know people are suddenly in the West sort of discovering it. So yeah. Oh, turmeric suddenly good for you. Yeah. Well, it's always been good for you. Uh, it's been good for you for thousands of years yeah. and they've known about it yeah. over there because over there it's almost got this kind of legendary yeah. status so yeah. a bride when she's getting yeah. married yeah. would you know put turmeric on her skin and that's then right. it has yeah. that sort yeah. of yeah, it's very good for uh, cleaning your teeth as well yeah well it's good for uh, yeah winding your teeth yeah they say. even though it's you yellow. expect it to yeah you expect it to stain your teeth wouldn't you yeah now this right. garam nice masala garam masala yes is that scottish no because i thought that um, just chicken, chicken masala. Chicken masala. Chicken tea masala. Yeah. Comes from Glasgow. That's one theory. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another theory is that it comes from a restaurant in Bombay. Right. Um, but masala just means spice. Yeah. And garum. Garum. Garum means warm or hot. Oh. Right. So all that actually means is a warming spice. I see. Right. Yeah. Um, the the, uh, the actual curry could well have been done from Glasgow. It could have, yeah. but. I say um, we had Harry on earlier, Harry Gotcha, yeah. who um, kicked us off early, yeah. early in, yeah. the, in the afternoon, yeah. and she did a chicken tikka masala, yeah. and uh, she said it was from yeah. Yeah. Well, The thing is about this garam masala, they, they can't uh, appreciate it, but the smell is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So it's a lot of the, it's a lot of, um, it's a blend yeah. of whole kind of aromatic spices. Yeah. So it tends to be like cinnamon, yeah. cloves. Yeah. Um, you know, pepper, all sorts of things. Yeah. And each blend is slightly different, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. So you can, yeah. and in certain parts of the world, they have slightly different yeah. blends. So, God, that's really quite amazing. And this, um, the fat on this meat, yeah. how would you get it to a point where it's sort of melting the mouth crispy? What you need to do, and I'm just going to point, okay, um, is hold, you basically have to kind of hold it down, and yeah. that's called rendering the fat. Yeah. So what that does is when it's hot enough, it will, I think we need to get that chicken out, but I'll Oh, 
And what you want is that nice sort of colour yeah. on there. So it's important not to, A, to get your pan really hot, mm -hmm. B, not to muck around with them not, straight away. Did you say so not too hot? Hot, oh, right, okay. and then don't sort of. A lot of people as soon as you put something in the pan, they start mm. they start doing silly things with it and mucking around with it. That's why these work so well on the barbecue. That's really nice, high heat, and really great um, for getting a good sear and good colour on there. So you would do that. Yeah. Let's pretend we've done that for longer, and then you would also then that's why pans are quite good. You can hold it down on the fat side for a little while. And that will sort of crisp up the fat yeah. meat. Yeah. I am. Yeah, you have a nice sleep, Peter said. Well, I've returned. Do you know, I've been washing up. I've returned to the room. I've been washing up. He's had a shot, but he is here. Isn't he? he is here. Yeah. Don't worry. We just saw it earlier, Peter. It's talking about favourite chefs. Who's your favourite chef? Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thomas Keller. Thomas Keller. Uh, he runs the uh, French laundry in Napa Valley. Right. Yeah. California. Right. But can he cook? Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> you, you were at, uh, he worked for, was it Marco? Marco, yeah. What was he like? Was he as intense. bad as the. Um... Intense. Right. Okay. But he's just very focused, he's very driven, very determined. Yeah. And you either keep up or. Yeah, oh, I forgot. Yeah. That was at Harvey's, was it? Hey? These, can, these mm. can go in the oven, right? Yeah. Metal handle, in it goes. So, perfect way to do it, nice hot pan, sear it on both sides, render the fat down yeah. for a bit longer than I did, yeah. and then put it in the oven to finish it off. Now those are quite fat chops, so they might take us, yeah. how long we got? They'll take us 10 oh, minutes. Oh, you've got, got 10 minutes? Got 10 minutes, got 10 minutes. Like a so that's sugary how long it's going to take. Cola bottle from the natural candy shop. Yeah. Uh, I won't, because then I won't be able to sure? Speak. Okay. <laughs> but, thank you for the offer. Right, well, nice I need to oh, yeah, nice. put this somewhere, I know, I've got an idea. I mean, this place is just heaven for a foodie or a person who likes to eat. Man. And I suggest you get yourself on a cookery school. Yeah. Or just turn up and don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> just like me. Just like me. Just like me. You right, we've got two more things to do before we put all this together and plate it up. Um, the first is spice and mashed potatoes. So yeah. I told you that this was inspired by a roast dinner this yeah. dish. So these are the, these are the potatoes to go with it. Now, in Bangladesh, you do a lot of mustard oil. You use a lot of mustard oil to cook with things. But when I was on MasterChef, they told me I couldn't use mustard oil. And I said, but why? And they said, well, it's not fit for human consumption. And I said, what do you mean? That apparently it's terrible, it can be bad for you. And, and, and actually, sure as... Sure enough, when I actually looked at the, the, the bottle, mm. it does say for e external use only. <laughs> and I thought it was a bit odd because, you know, yeah. there's 150 million people in Bangladesh and they eat it every day and they seem to be fine. But, yeah. but hey, they told me I couldn't use it, so I didn't use it. Um, but what I then did was something else. So I kind of made up another way of doing it. So I used the rape seed oil, yeah. cold pressed rape seed oil, and then I put some mustard seeds in it. So that way. So all these things the same, are they've checked beforehand, are they? Yeah, they're quite, they, yeah, because they, they get all the ingredients for yeah. you. Um, but I wanted to, so this is based on a, a Bengali sort of idea, which is a, a potatoes which are mashed with chilli and, uh, and mustard oil, which is a really you know, a bit traditional thing and a really nice thing. So I just decided to, um, um, yeah, to do it this way and it, it worked. So you, can you see the mustard seeds are starting to dance yeah. around? Right, well that's good, that's exactly what we wanted. I uh, haven't chopped these terribly well. Whoa, they're dancing a bit too much now, so I should take them off. They're going to end up all over the kitchen. I'll just take those out. Put in my spring onion, which I have chopped inexpertly. And I've just got some new potatoes here, which um, I boiled previously. So they are pre boiled. Then we need to season them with salt. And I would like some chilli in there as well. Mm. So we're going to use the chilli, but how are we going to know how hot our chilli is, Andy? Um, what is the best way to know how hot our chilli is? Bite it. To taste it, but not to bite it and eat it. So what you have to do is, chop it down the middle, yeah. expose the seeds, yeah. dab it on the back of the pan, and then have a lick. It's a brilliant tip. Yeah. It's alright, right? It's got a bit of heat, but it's yeah. nothing yeah. special. Yeah, so we're going to put all of that in. We're not going to bother to take the seeds yeah. out or anything like that. I might even put in two. 
No, he's tasted it, he's fine. I think he's recovered from his earlier trauma. Did you see that? Yeah, I did see that. Did blow my head off? What's I think the fact that you ate about three of them, yeah. one after the other, was probably something to do with it. And what's uh, what's coming up at 3 a.m.? 3 a.m. We, Trinidad and Tobago. Ah. So we've got Sabrina coming on, and she will be full of beans. And what yeah. time's the full English breakfast? Uh, we've got bre I'm not sure what our breakfast is. Is it six or <laughs> full English? Seven or? Sure, at nine o'clock so I can watch it at home. We're doing a bit of brunch. Oh, are you going home then, are you? Of course I'm going home. Yeah. I'm staying on this. I'm going to go home to my nice warm bed. Electric blanket on. You'll be here. Electric blanket. You'll be here at five o'clock in the morning. Oh, yes, yes. Right, while we're doing that, we're going to make our mint sauce, yeah. which is actually a mint chutney. Um, so what I need you to do is to take the leaves off of this mint, please, and pop them in here. You're going to make sure the blender works, aren't you? Me? So this is my version of the mint sauce, which is basically so a which way, How do I take these off? Do them that way? The blender's working. Lovely. Yeah, so what we're going to do is like chop everything up really roughly, because we're going to use the blender. I'm only going to use half of this clove of garlic, because it's enormous. And garlic actually has quite a lot of heat, so if you put too much of that garlic in, it's going to be too hot. Yeah. All of this is going to pop straight in the blender. Is that it there? Pop that in there. The stalks of your coriander. Yeah. 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 Right. Stalks of the coriander are the best bit. So don't ever leave them out. They're, they really are the best. Yeah. We need to balance this up. So chutney and these things, it's more like a relish. It's all about balance. So we're going to use a bit of salt. A bit of sugar. We need a bit of acidity. Is Rupert still here? What vinegar yes. would you recommend? You need some acidity. Is Rupert here? That may have sounded bad. Right, I put in some salt, I put in some sugar, so that's going to balance that out as well. The other way we get acidity is from the yoghurt that we're going to put in there. So we're going to put some yoghurt in. You can chuck all those mint leaves in, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Not this time, right? And um, I was going to ask you, Greg Wallace, can he actually cook? No. Oh. That's what I mean, how do we get a job on MasterChef? Because he can eat. That's, yeah, yes, I can eat. So, exactly, so yeah. he's supposed to be... Like, I'm sure he needs to be able to cook. The so, ordinary... Uh, no, I don't think so. Critique. No, I think you just have to know what you like. Uh, well, that's like saying, I can't, you know, decide if the cake's nice or not, just because I'm, I'm not a master baker. I can, so I know that I like cake. So, Greg Wallace can't cook. And he can cook. A little bit, I'm sure. Well, he didn't need to do a cooking show. Not really. I won't hear a word to it again, so he's a very nice man. Is, it, is he your favourite judge? No. Oh. Like John They're better. both lovely. You prefer John, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> well, You're just trying to try and make me say things I don't want to say. Right. Dog that's going there. Mint. Okay. Maybe. That'll do. Yeah. And then that all needs to just be blitzed up. And that's going to go here. Can you do something with the blender? Yeah, what would you like to do with it? Make it go whiz. Make it go? Yeah. No problem. And then, let's chill up a bit and then we'll start to take all this up. Right, fantastic. We are done. 
done. You done? I'm going to turn that off. So what we need to do now is construct our biryani. Because it's rested, it's so important to rest me. I know that everybody says it, but it really is. Yeah. If you're going to go to the effort of cooking it, you might as well rest it so that it does actually taste good. And so that's so the all that's the It just is the same as it is with anything. It, it just brings, sort of lets it relax, lets all the moisture go back into the um, back into the fibres of the meat. Do you want to pour some of that in, avoiding the bit you didn't quite get? So I won't stir this together too much, you can see how it looks, but basically you can see that that is a really delicious um, looking thing and it's just lovely to open up open up the, uh, the pot at the table and, and serve it like that, it's really good. kind of sharing platter, mm. pop it on the table, really nice at a barbecue or something like that. Oh. They are massive, aren't they? They're good size, aren't They're they? They're good size chops. And then you serve that with our beautifully green mint chutney or mint sauce to go with it. And our spiced crushed potatoes, so there we go, we've got our two dishes. Nice. Salad lamb chops, spiced potatoes, oh, 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 I wish. And then this is our chicken biryani. So Aww. you might want to leave those till the end, let them rest for a bit, and then and then try the other bits. No Don't spill any yeah. Primark shit. Tell them it's Gamp, Pete. Go on. Apparently it's Gamp. Is, yeah. is that good? It's Primark. <laughs> well, did you open Primark? I might have opened it once. <laughs> Would you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is lovely. Oh, the oh, that. Oh, is that, is that good? Yeah. yeah I like it. Classy. Yeah. I think we might have to try that as well. Mmm. That's been that for the whole time last. An hour still to wait, but I'm not going to. I don't want to eat lamb very often, mm. I should. Don't you? I love it. Mm. Oh, I love it. I'm sure it's my favourite meat. Mmm. And around here, you've got such beautiful lamb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, indeed. Alright, I'm conscious I'm eating Sabrina's time now. Oh, wow, that's all right. Sabrina's kind of throwing stuff all over the floor oh, at the moment. But it's good, isn't it? Because oh. it's not spicy, mm. it's not... There's nothing in there. Mm. Mm. I would say this is a great sort of starter 
curry. Mm. For people that are not sure they like it or they think they're a bit wary about spicy food, now they're gonna like it. <coughs> this has just got flavour. Mm. It's not it's got nothing in there that's gonna sort of alarm anyone. Um, it's great for children, people who perhaps haven't haven't tried it before. This lamb's amazing. Try this. But it's good looking lamb. It's good looking lamb, Andy. Have a mm. good sauce. Nah. Oh, it's so good, sauce. That. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Good. Well, thank you very much. Thanks Sarah, for having me. thank you very much. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. You're You've been a legend. Welcome. Very well. You've kept Andy out of trouble. He was here. He's still not gone home. He's not? No. Can't go home now. No, that's it. He's in for the <laughs> long haul. So what's happening now then? We've got the Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah. Oh. We're going from one side yeah. of the world to the other, right? I'm going to